Let me start by introducing my panel. I want to start with our policy maker. As I said, I'm a bit intimidated sometimes by the achievements of our panel. So party, you're still the chair of the, of the National Consumer Education Forum. So she's right at the top of what's happening around financial education in South Africa. And my request to her is to try and share some perspectives of where we're going with financial education in the country. From a national treasury perspective and just from a national perspective, I think best practice has shown that um, financial education, for it to be achieved more effectively and improving financial capability in a country, it's best to formalize the, the coordination and the collaboration approach. And this is why back in 2012 already, the National Consumer Financial Education Committee was formed. And this was on the back of the policy reforms that were outlined in the um, National Treasury Policy document, a safer financial sector to serve South Africa better. And in this, um, in the, with these policy reforms, we were looking at issues of financial stability, at ensuring consumer protection, making sure that the consumers, there is financial inclusion, and this financial inclusion is also supplemented by having financially literate and capable consumers who are then able to interact well with the, with the financial services offering. And I think financial education was highlighted as a key component because it is very integral in terms of ensuring that consumers are protected in terms of in how they interact with the financial service providers. But just bringing it back to the financial education um, aspect and the collaboration that we are having at the National Consumer Financial Education Committee, We've got your CISA um, represented there, your CISA Foundation. We've got, I can see around the room that we've got our members from the uh, industry associations, professional bodies and community that have come through together at this committee where we work together to ensure that we leverage each other's um, you know, knowledge in terms of financial education, what they are doing in their spaces and bringing it together to ensure that we work collaboratively, both at a national level and also at an industry level. I know that they do collaborate to work together and ensure that we are, you know, we advancing financial education. And one of the, the um, uh, flagship initiatives that we have got as the National Consumer Financial Education Committee is the Money Smart Week initiative. Uh, that will be taking place at the end of, of uh, August to the beginning of uh, September this year. And I think, you know, the collaboration that is there has just grown in leaps and bounds in terms of what we are seeing on the ground. Yes, the results from the financial literacy survey that is done by the FSCA has shown that things have not um, gone as well as we would have hoped, yes, the, the results of the survey are showing that we are running a bit stagnant, but we are going to be pushing forward and ensuring that we take learnings from those results and ensure that we put more effort where it is, where effort is required. And just lastly, I would just like to mention, I think in the when these policies are made and in the work that we do, I think we could never have even imagined that the efforts that are being put into financial education and so on would help us to achieve the results that we've got here with the likes of Zanele and what has been what we saw on the video. And I'd just like to really, really congratulate the CISA Foundation on this and all the stakeholders who were involved in making this possible. Thank you. If I could, if I could go to John now, perhaps John, um, you've kind of always been an advocate, advocate of doing financial education properly. 
So if I could introduce John, apart from him being a trustee of the foundation, he's also, you run financial education at Old Mutual, and he's also a bit of a media personality, so you can, you can all go and Google him and find some of his interesting stuff on YouTube and stuff like that. But um, John's always been an advocate and a passionate advocate of financial education and doing things properly and so on. Can you maybe reflect for us on a little bit of the work of, he's also the chair of the, the convener of, the, of the, the, the Financial Education Standing Committee this season. So can you maybe reflect on some of the work of your committee and where that fits in and how that supports what the foundation does and so on? Thank you very much. Um, you know, when, when it comes to financial education, uh, globally speaking, there's a lot of teach and run. Teach and run is similar to hit and run. Mm -hmm. So you teach once and then whether there's impact or not is neither here nor there. That's, that's a teach and run. That's not how Assisa Foundation operates. There's no teach and run here. There's proper consumer financial education with proper monitoring and evaluation. There is a lot of work to be done uh, industry-wide, and I think members recognize that, that that's why we appreciate and respect uh, the work that is done by the foundation. And we're starting to say, how do we get our execution to the same level that Assisa Foundation has done? I think uh, Assisa Foundation has set the bar very high for the industry, and I can tell you now, uh, you know, we're going to be seeing a lot of um, members firing in all cylinders and I think the foundation is up for a challenge. Ingrid, is the, is, she's the deputy person, uh, chairperson of the CISA Foundation. She's also the chair of the CISA ESD Fund. She's played a massively instrumental role in the Foster Future the Initiative since the beginning, more or less, uh, Ingrid. Um, so it's been great. You were also here in the early years. Now, you're a student, Ingrid, of, of the, the landscape in South Africa, and when we chatted some time back, you mentioned this this report that's, that's recently been produced on the status of financial education and, and how financially literate South Africans are and that sort of thing. And, um, and without depressing us too much, because I, I did have a little bit of a, a look at that report, can you reflect on that for us in a little bit, just to, so that we understand a little bit of what are the challenges we're facing as a country, number one. And then number two, try and interface that somehow with the role that the CISA Foundation is trying to play to address some of those issues. I'm going to answer your question in the context of M&E, um, monitoring and evaluation. Uh, we at the CISA Foundation, and Isaac mentioned it, we sift through these massive M&E reports looking at the results that, our, that we've achieved, what lessons we've learned, what must happen in the next program to make it better and to uh, uh, take the whole picture forward. I was reflecting of, on that at a micro level. We do it for programs. We look at the M&E, we consider the program, and then I went back to the national level. And I said, here we sit, we've got the enablers, the legislation, we've got the National Consumer Financial Education Committee, we've got the national strategy. How are those going in terms of M&E? And then I thought, let's go and have a look at the baseline study, because we've been at this now for many, many years. How are we doing at a national level? And we can't look away from it and say it wasn't a representative sample, they didn't look at our guys, because we know at, as the CESA Foundation, the guys that we are talking to, it's like a stone in a river, in a, in a pond. You chuck them in, we've done that, what you call the the, the learn and run. We didn't learn and run. We chucked the stone in and we're watching those ripples spread. But I want those ripples to spread at a national level. And quite frankly, guys, we ain't cracking it at a national level. We ain't getting to everybody. So what do we need to do? We've got these amazing programs and this is where collaboration comes in. We've got to ramp them up. We've got to get out, make our ripples go greater. And we've also got to go back to our enablers, our legislation, and say, hey, are those pieces of law, the financial sector code, are they really still fit for purpose? Are they doing the nudging that we want done in order to progress consumer financial education and to get financial literacy and capability up and running across South Africa? Because we 
we're just not achieving it. And you can say, oh yeah, but 2020 was a bad year, it was COVID, hana, hana, hana. But the point is we've been doing it for so many years and we had the prime example, Zanele, she says, I learned how to save. We haven't done it at a national level. Our people, are, the people out there, the South Africans, and it's not only the poor and poverty ridden, really it's the retirees who've got buckets of money that they've now squandered and that have got involved in scams. Why is that? Because we're not getting out there with these messages. And that's probably where the power of collaboration is. We have to collaborate. We have to ramp up what we are achieving at a micro level to achieve the same results at a national level. Quite frankly, if we don't crack it at a national level, we are at the edge. I mean, as Busisa said, we're standing at the edge.